Hello friends, in this video tutorial, let us see the algorithm of sequence clustering for data mining in SSAS. So for the purpose of this video tutorial, let us go and create a new project. Now let us name this project as SSAS data mining 6. Right. Let us create a new connection that is data source to Adventure Data Works DW. So it is pointing to the right database. So let's click next. Let's give service account. Finish. Let's create a new DSV. Now let us use the same two views that we have used in our last example. That is the view related to orders and the line items. Next. Let's call it as DSV, finish. Now, as these are views, so there can be foreign key relationship between views, right? So let us create a logical relationship between these views. So this, this is orders table, this is line items table. So let us create the logical relationship. Now let's go and create a new mining structure. So let's go and select sequence clustering. Now when is sequence clustering used? Generally sequence clustering is used to form clusters where the sequencing of events is useful or is important. For example, let's say if we are analyzing data of sales for from a web website, okay, that is web based sales. Now in the website the sequence of the web pages visited by the customer is important. So the sequence in which the customer bought things on over the website, the sequence of pages through which the user traversed and kept on buying things, it is important for us. Okay, so that's the way in which we can restructure the website. Okay, or, or its flow, content flow. So in such scenarios generally the sequence clustering is useful that is the scenarios in which we want to let's say study the sequence of sales okay we not we are not only interested in the items which have been purchased but the sequence in which the items have been purchased right if we are interested in that also then sequence clustering can be used so let's click next next orders is our main table and line items is our supporting table that is nested table right detail table correct now over here order is the key okay now over here in this example the line number represents the sequence in which the items have been bought okay the model items have been bought in the order of line number. So line number will form part of the key. Okay, so it is also part of the key. Also, what is acting as an input along with the sequence in which the things have been bought, that is line number. Along with that, the actual name of the products that have been bought is also an input, right? And also the name of the products is the, predict, is the thing that we want to predict, okay? So things have been configured in this. Now this is correct. Order number is key. Line number is just is representing the sequence for the key, and model is a discrete value which we want to predict also, right? Let's use all the data. Let's not keep any data for testing purpose, right? So we don't have any test data. We are using the whole data set, right? Let's call this as mining structure and let's call this as sequence clustering, right? Okay, so mining model is now prepared. So let's go to database. We can see that there is no database with the name SSS data mining 6, correct? 
so let's copy the name let's go to deployment properties we can see that the new database that will be created with, will be created with the name of sss data mining 6 right so let's provide the server name right okay now we can deploy So deployment and processing has succeeded so let's close everything let's go to database let's refresh let's see that things have come to database yes mining structure also we can see sequence clustering right so let's go and now we can go and go through our mining model viewer okay to analyze the data okay so As we can see, it is quite similar to the Microsoft clustering algorithm. Okay, so this sequence clustering also forms clusters, but basically it forms clusters based on the sequence of the of the data, right? Or in this case, it is forming sequence of the products which have been purchased, right? So we can see more than ten clusters. In fact, fifteen clusters have been created. Okay, so this is for the this shading is for the whole population we if we want we can have shading for a particular product also let's say sports hundred right or let's say mountain tire right so it's only present ml mountain tire is only present in 13 and 2 right cluster number 13 and 2 right so in this way we can we can see data product wise also right so ll road tire is present mostly in cluster number 3 okay so in this way also we can analyze the data among the clusters which has been distributed in the clusters okay so now if you want to study profile of a particular cluster let's say we want to study profile of cluster number three then how can we do that we go to cluster profiles we go over here right every column is representing a cluster and we can go over here this is cluster three and then in cluster three we can analyze the data further let's go to cluster characteristics so this is for the whole population so it shows that model sports 100 is the one having maximum sales right it is having maximum probability so if you want to go to cluster 3 then mountain 200 is the starting point right ll road tire is also present right so in this way we can analyze the further sequence of transactions in the cluster also right the cluster discrimination is similar to the diagram or the chart that we had seen as, as part of clustering right over here we can compare which all attributes are favoring which cluster okay or the complement of the cluster okay right and this is very important and this is new for the cluster sequencing right so sequence clustering so over here if we let's analyze cluster number three okay so we can understand that generally after cycling cap we, there is 92 percent probability of person buying water bottle okay after buying road bottle cage there is 99 percent probability that the person buys water bottle okay after after ll road tire right generally there is 62 percent probability that person buys patch kit and after patch kit there is 98 percent probability that the customer doesn't buy anything further okay so this symbol is for end okay so there is 98 percent probability that customer doesn't buy anything so in this way we can analyze the exact sequence in which customer is buying different products using the help of state transitions diagram so this is very helpful and very important for as far as sequence clustering is concerned 
सो आई होप फ्रेंड्स दिस वीडियो ट्यूटोरियल इज़ यूजफुल टू यू थैंक यू